Welcome to the Fantasy Rugby Draft How To Draft tutorial. In this clip we're going to show you how to draft your team for the season and a few other little bits and pieces uh, around Fantasy Rugby Draft for those that are playing for the first time. Um, just specifically in this clip we're going to cover the online draft. There is an offline draft as well but we'll, we'll run you through that at a separate tutorial. Uh, the first thing to note should be when that draft date and time is. So if you're creating a league or joining a league, uh, joining a public league, make sure you know when that draft date time is because that is when your team is being drafted for the season. So it's it's vitally important that you are actually at that draft because that's where the fun is um, and that's where the banter is and that's where you know the difference in all the other different types of fantasy rugby games are. It is this draft. Um, now if you can't uh, make the draft if you know your internet drops out if there's an episode of the Kardashians that you can't miss or you just don't feel comfortable drafting for the first time there is an automated facility um, that drafts your team for you so um, you will get a half decent team out of that but if you've got specific players that you want and um, you do want to try the draft and really, really encourage people to try that draft because it is a lot of fun um, to make sure you know when that draft date time is so You've joined a league or you've created a league, you know when that draft date time is, uh, what's the next step? The next step is just to make sure that your connection is set up okay. So that you can draft um, and, and you can make sure that you're not behind a firewall and then everything works okay on the draft day. This little join draft button here, so we're within two hours of, of the drafting time, so this changes to the join draft button. But before the two hour um, countdown, it's a test your connection button. So I encourage you to go in here and check that and make sure you get the three green lights. And if you don't, is to figure out why. And it could be because you're doing it behind a work firewall. It could be because you don't have the latest browser. There are a number of factors that, um, that, that will cause it to, to not have the optimal experience, I guess, is the simplest way to put it. Now, it, it does work on uh, iPad and mobile. It's not the greatest experience, and if you're tethering it via, if you're te tethering an iPad to, uh, say, a cell phone or a mobile phone, sometimes some networks have security settings on there as well. It, it's quite detailed. All we say is that we want you to draft on the desktop, on your laptop, um, because it is just that much easier and it's a much better experience for you if you can't do it and you need to be online and you're out and about then it can actually work on most mobile phones i would just put a little asterisk just to say that check it beforehand to make sure it works okay so within the two hours you get this join draft button and that's when your um, draft is uh, is almost formalized it's kicked off uh, there's a countdown that starts and this join draft button will appear so click this join draft button go to your league click on this join draft and you'll get this console that comes up in front of you and the first thing to note is just to check this time on the top left up here so that's how many seconds you have until the start of your draft so we're a long way out at the moment um, and this is just to just to kind of illustrate um, and get in a little bit of um, background around what this what this what you're looking at basically so we've got a bit of time secondly to note so for fantasy rugby draft you need 11 starting players so this is your description down here of what you need so there's 11 players in a starting lineup so you have three outside backs you have two midfielders one fly half one halfback two loose forwards one lock and an entire front row so you're actually selecting a, a team front row so if you get the Saracens front row, you get everybody that plays in that front row, including folks that come off the bench to play, who have played proper hooker. And you have six bench spots as well. So the makeup of the squad is 17 players. The next step is to see when your draft pick is. So on the far right hand side is, once you started a draft and once that two hour window clicks down, uh, the draft randomizes the, the order, so the, the, the picks that you have, this picking order here, it's randomized by the site, and that's the first time you get a, a quick sneak peek to see, okay, I'm drafting at number two, I'm Ned Stark, um, and Team C has the first overall pick. So the team always at the top here is the one in blue, and that's the one that's drafting right now. Now obviously it's not drafting right now because we've got still 4,000, 4,500 seconds to go. So, But you can have a quick look and you can see where all the other teams are. 
And a quick note about the draft as well, um, for those that are doing it for the first time. So this is the picking order. It goes 1 through 10. And then the second round, it goes 10 through 1. So Team F will have the 10th pick, but they'll also have the 11th pick. And then Team G has the 12th pick, and so on. So it's snakes, or what they call is it's snakes. Um, so I'm second here, so I get the second pick in the first round, but I'll also get the second to last pick in the second round. Depending on drafts, depending on how it works, um, it might be better to get a pick that's a little bit lower down in the in the 9-10 spot because you could get two really good players. But on the same hand, you might be better getting one. So it, it all really, de really depends on the flow of your draft. Uh, and that's kind of leading into the next point, which is no two drafts are the same. Every draft is different. Every Everybody brings in different views, different strategies, different... Uh, local bias, if you will, um, and they all bring something new to the table. So what you need to be clear in your own head is your own rankings. So these rankings here are ones that the site's produced or we've sat down in a bunker and, and hashed out quite a few of these uh, different various position rankings and then overall as well. But I encourage you to make up your own rankings as well. So sit down and go, okay, who are my top 10 fly halves? And then list them out. Because you get 90 seconds to make your pick, and you'll see that once it comes back online, once we, once the draft starts. And that 90 seconds can go really, really quickly. Um, and there is a lot of banter, and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of stuff going on. It always seems quite a frenetic time, um, and that 90 seconds goes really, really quickly. So at any one point in time, it's really useful to just reach across, look at your rankings to say, okay, who is my highest ranked player at this point? And then you start looking at the scarcity of the draft. Is it the right time to draft my second fly half? Or do I need to stock up on outside backs on my bench? What's everyone else doing? Um, so I really encourage you, even if it's just the top 10 at each position, um, just go ahead and make those rankings because they will be invaluable for you when you come onto the draft. Right, the other the other bits that you can see on the site here, the other little bit of little bits of functionality, is we've got a bit of a chat here, so um, so you can just have a bit of banter and, and make sure you really yeah you know, you're really positive encouragement um, to to all your draft mates. Um, which is really what you want to do. And, and if you can't see my tongue firmly in cheek, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to upset um, everybody else in the draft. You, you want to make sure that, that you plant that seed of uncertainty about their draft pick. The unwritten rule of drafting is that no one is ever congratulated for making a draft pick. It should always be sucking air through your teeth or, oh my goodness, that's early, or geez, I thought he was out for six months, that type of thing. So, um, Make sure that you use the draft just to just to send that bit of banter back. Something like that. Something like that usually gets the uh, the blood boiling and a little bit of a um, little bit of googling to check to see injuries. But that's that's time that they've taken out of planning their draft. So you've distracted them straight away. Um, and as soon as you can start unsettling them, then they make pressure picks, people make mistakes, and then 90 seconds. As I say, especially the folks that think they know what they're doing, it gets pretty thin pretty quickly, and all of a sudden you're pulling names out that have been injured that you just didn't do the research in. So it's imperative that you have those rankings, even if it is just for that top 10. So we talked about the chat, we've talked about the draft order, how the draft works. Um, if you want to look for players, you can do that as well here. Um, so we're looking for Owen Farrell, he's down at number 10. Um, you can also, you know, if I wanted to, uh, I wanted to just look at fly halves, I want to look at halfbacks, and then I want to change, you know, I look at various teams, I can rank them that way, um, and then back to ranking. So it's all, it's all filterable and it's all sortable as well if you, if you want to start looking. I, I use these um, position filters quite regularly just to see you know, wherever I am in the league, to, uh, sorry, the draft, is to say, okay, who's, who are the next on the list? And then how far away are they on the screen before someone recognizes a name and then has to pull that? Um, as your team's filled up, and you'll see this in a second once we, once we kind of jump forward into the draft, um, you'll see the, the players that you selected put in your team here.
Okay, so I've stepped forward in the drafting um, a few rounds just so that you can see what it looks like after a few players have been picked. And it makes the things like the teams and the picks tabs on the on the left hand side here um, make a little bit more sense. So just, just kind of recapping um, what my team looks like. You can see it on the left here. So Nick Evans, George Ford, Dolman, Harry Mallander, uh, Ollie Woodburn and Frank Kalai. See, I'm in blue here. My team name's Ned Stark. I've got 40 seconds on the clock here. And you could just got to click a player and you can see the draft button up here. So just, just before I show you what the teams and picks are, I need to just figure out what my next pick would good bid be. So I need to fill one more outside back. Uh, outside back, the highest ranked is Anthony Watson, Chris Ashton. How much is Watson going to be away in England? How well are Bath going to go? Yeah. We'll draft him. So that just slots in there. Uh, and as I said earlier, you can see that all of these players are offline at the moment, so those are all auto picks. So the, it comes straight back to me again, and I'm at the top, and I get another 90 seconds. Now it's not going to be this frenetic in your own league. Uh, there's going to be lots of people online, hopefully most of them. Um, so you will have quite a bit of time. Um, I don't. But just to kind of have a recap of the picks, if you wanted to, to open this tab by clicking on the picks button, and it'll pop out, and you can see all of the draft. So you can see what the first five picks were, um, and they were pretty much the rankings that we had on the site. And you can follow them all the way down. Um, what I find quite useful is this Teams tab here. You can see what teams around you, like Team C and Team D, if you look over here on the right, are the two people quite near me. So I kind of, I can have a look at their team and see what they're missing. You can see straight away he's got no outside backs. And if this was a real draft, you know that he's probably going to look for outside backs in his next pick. So it probably, if you weren't, if you were humming and hiring between an outside back or a fly for midfielder, or maybe even your first loose forward at this point, then you might go and grab that next outside back because you know that these two here, you've got Team C coming up here, likely to be an outside back somewhere in there. So it's just quite useful to do that next level of um, analysis. But for me, I'm okay with outside backs. I don't need a half pack. I probably have a loose forward. So what's the highest on the list? Yeah, we'll go with the highest on the list. And you can see, and you can see, I actually missed my uh, missed my pick, and it got auto drafted for me. I was too uh, too busy point uh, talking to you folks, so it auto auto drafted my uh, Ben Youngs because I hadn't drafted a half pack at that point, and he was the highest uh, the highest ranked player. So uh, I'll save a little bit of time now and grab that high loose forward up there and draft him and slot him in the team. So you can just use these teams in the in the in the picks to your advantage especially if you've got like um an offline uh, sorry an online draft that there aren't many folks online sometimes it goes pretty quickly and it's really difficult to see who was taken at what position so you you can have a look at these um and it shows you who's been taken and, and who who did what as this is the first uh, season of the aviva we, we don't have any stats up here um, in this this blank space here, um, Henry Slade, for instance, would have average points per game and meters and line breaks. All of his stats up here um, within the draft. If this was the second season, if we were in Super Rugby, for instance, you'd see his stats up here. And it's just a little bit more of a, a guide and, and a help if you're tossing up between two players. Um, average points per game is a pretty good kind of indicator of how useful someone is. Uh, and whether they were trying to stack it up against each other. So picking it up again, just towards the last few rounds of the draft. This is typically where um, you start building out your bench and players like, or positions like halfback and locks, which don't generate as many points as your outside backs or your fly halves, where you start to generally pick them up. So especially in the single position um, player, uh, single positions like 
uh, the halfback or the lock. So, I mean, you can see I got Ben Youngs a little bit earlier in the draft. So let's have a look at some locks that I might like. Um, and and one of the key aspects is to see if you can find a player that is listed in the lock position that is potentially playing number eight or potentially playing in the loose forwards. Um, a great example of this this season was Jed Holloway uh, for the Waratahs. And a good example in the Aviva Premiership is um, Don Ormond, who plays for, for Exeter. He's, he's usually around that loose forward trio. But he was listed as a lock by Opta. So he's probably going to pick up a few more running meters. And he is actually our number one ranked lock. So I'm happy with George Cruz. He's probably going to be away with England duty for a wee bit. But good player. We'll stick with that. So you can see I've got two more two more players to fill out. This is where it'd be great, as well as having your rankings that I talked about a little bit earlier. It's nice just to see if you can have a few flyers, a few players that are, that could just you know that no one is really thinking of, that are under the radar, that 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 you can wait to these last few rounds to grab. Um, and sometimes this is where you win or lose your fantasy championship has been able to pick up this this Nehem Milner Scudder type, this um, Damian McKenzie a couple of years ago, those types of players, you can find those. That is the kind of secret of winning fantasy rugby draft titles. So uh, I'm going to go with James Haskell only because I love his DJing ability and his budgie smugglers, uh, nothing else. Uh, I suspect he's, well, he is out injured for a, a few months at the moment. Um, and then he'll obviously be away with England as well. So... That's, that's why he's way down here and he's not actually ranked um, uh, it, it is for those reasons but we'll draft them anyway just for those reasons so I've got one more to make let's just finish this out by uh, Jonathan Joseph good player as well right so what you'll see now is once all of these auto teams are finished you'll see a, a little button here that says return to your site so click on that and it takes you back to the dashboard here. Click on your league. And you can see your league, ta league table. Um, and it's all nicely split up into your two conferences. You've got your chat, fun chat functionality down here. You can quickly go into your lineup team, uh, a lineup section here, and you can start and bench players who you want. So depending on who you want to start this week, uh, maybe I want Neville Edwards to play over Frank Eli this week. See other people's teams as well. Um, and you can also then check to see your matchups, um, who you're playing first week. And I'm obviously up against the mountain, tough matchup, um, physically and on the uh, virtual board. Um, if you wanted to pick up some extra players or you wanted to, you thought after the draft, oh, that's right. I need to go and grab this player. This is where you go and do it. So just go in here and have a look around and have a poke. So these are all the players you can, you can search for. Um, we do have a separate tutorial around that as well, around how to pick a tower to add players and cut players so I won't get into it here before I go I wanted to quickly touch on the offline draft and, and how to do that as well um, typically what we see is that if folks are trying fantasy rugby draft for the first time that they will join a public league first and they'll play it out for a season just get to understand how the draft works the waiver wire trading and all of those things um, and, and once they've done that um, then what they invariably what we see a lot of is they go and get 10 of their mates and they make a, an offline draft uh, the second season, the next season. And in that draft, you, you can go and have it at someone's place or at the pub or at the rugby club or wherever. Um, and it's a really, really great day. Um, it's one of the first ones that's always in my calendar signed off by the partner. And in that offline draft is you do something very similar. You all take turns at selecting a player. But the difference being is that there isn't an, an online, there isn't, a, a, a timer that counts you out or auto drafts to you. The commissioner usually just tracks those draft picks um, in a spreadsheet and they can upload it the next day or, or whenever the draft is finished and it'll propagate out very similar to, to what you do in an online draft. But we love offline drafting. That All of my drafts are offline. Um, it's a hell of a lot of fun. As I say, the first the first date that goes in the calendar mostly is all my, uh, all my fantasy drafts. It's a great lot of fun and I really hope you guys enjoy it as well. That's probably enough for the how to draft tutorial. If you want to get in touch with us then contact us on um, Twitter. We're at, uh, at Fantasy Rug Draft. That's Fantasy R-U-G Draft. 
or you can drop us an email um, at support at fantasyrugbydraft.com. We're also on Facebook uh, and check out our podcast too, the Fantasy Rugby Draft podcast with myself and the man primarily made of moss, Nathan Mossman. Hope you all have fun um, and really get into those drafts. Um, good luck for the season.